I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one that silver true song. <laughs> One of the uh, texts this week in the lectionary was a few little verses in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. It has in it some uh, sensitive information. Uh, and it's got a lot of positive information, but some of the information is a little bit sort of, I guess we don't like to really hear much at all. But anyway, uh, we're going to find the, the good and talk about the good. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15, that very first verse, uh, the end of the chapter, chapter 5, it's about relationships, and uh, but this is sort of a, a prerequisite to that, I believe, if you will. It's about the importance of walking in the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.15 says, see then that you walk circumspectly, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. 
That word circumspectly uh, is graphic. It's, it's a picture, if you will. It's picturing a person who looks all about as he walks and is thus alert and guarded, accurately, carefully paying close attention to the immediate surroundings. In the early 80s, I had a job in Anna, and I spent three and a half years looking over my shoulder, over my back, behind me, all the time, seemed like, no matter, no matter where I went, uh, because you didn't know what was going to come next, an object or a person or something. So I, I understand exactly uh, this picture about a person who looks all about as he walks, alerted and guarded, accurately, carefully, paying close attention. That is the emphasis of Ephesians 5.15. But this is talking about the things of the Spirit and the things of God as opposed to uh, darkness. The Apostle Paul gives a little information. Uh, that word wisdom in verse 15 are not as fools but as wise. The wisdom referred to in verse 15 is sound Spiritual judgment and discernment. Discernment. We have been in church, most of us, all of our lives, and so we learned long ago the difference between what we can do and what we should not do, what is right and what is wrong. Uh, the Bible is very, very clear about issues like that. And so... Paul is saying here that we are not to be as fools, but as wise. And I know that word fools is a, a harsh word, and we're not supposed to call somebody a fool. But I'm just reading verse 15. It says, not as fools, but as wise. The wisdom in verse 15 is about sound spiritual judgment and discernment. And then the word fools, fools is the negative form of the same word unwise in the New Testament Greek. Christians cannot be naive or indifferent. We must understand the issues that confront us as we live for Christ, according to verse 15. There is some main truths in verse 15 uh, about our walk and walking in the light. The first one, walk worthy of the position we are called to have in Christ. Walk worthy of the position we are called to have in Christ. So it seems like no matter where we go, no matter what we do, uh, Someone is watching or someone sees us. And so we are to, to walk worthy of the position that we call ourselves as Christians. We're also found in verse 15. We're to walk in such a way as to make a complete break with the ways of the unconverted before we accepted Christ. There is to be a, a clear difference between the two. Another point, we're to walk in love. Jesus loves us and we love others through his power. That is the key to the ball game right there. Through his power. That is how we are to love others. We're to walk in the light there is some places that we know, and that is why the buzzer goes off whenever we, we start to walk in uh, somewhere where we shouldn't or do something we shouldn't do. There's an automatic reject button that comes on, 
And uh, so that is what that is talking about here. We're to walk carefully in wisdom, noticing our surroundings, what is going on. We must understand who we are, who we belong to, and that people are watching. I learned a long time ago that uh, being the postmaster of a town and pastoring churches, I can't go anywhere, it seemed like. So I, I, I sort of revert back to the looking behind me. But uh, anyway, that was just a little sidebar that didn't hear anything. <laughs> Verse 16 gives the purpose and the reason why Verse 15 is there. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So that is why we are supposed to walk circumspectly, not as fool, fools, but as wise. The redeeming the time, one explanation or definition for redeeming the time, buying up, buying up, purchasing to set free. And the time, the word time there, is the word that means the season of opportunity. Acting in such a way to take advantage of the present opportunity, snap up or buying up the time because the days are evil. Connected to that, the days we live in are evil and the season of opportunity will soon come to an end. That is why we're to redeem the time. Because our season of opportunity will soon come to an end. Hearing about Isaiah and Libby and our, our daughter and Heron Stephanie, Graham, and I'm sure he won't... Uh, but anyway, he's, he's a senior this year. And uh, Paul, his dad, was going to put down some concrete so that have a place to park. And he said, you don't need to bother with that. I'm not going to be here very long. And I thought, oh. Uh, so they're here for a little while, and then, and then they're gone. The season of opportunity will soon come to an end. So seize every opportunity to practice Christian love. Verse 17, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And an interesting connection was made that I found about verse 17. This understanding of the will of the Lord is the practical understanding demonstrated in applying God's revealed will, His law, to life. So the Word of God is God's revealed will, His law. The understanding here in 17, the understanding demonstrated in applying God's revealed will, will, His law to life. Romans 12, 1 and 2, where it talks about that we may prove what is a good and acceptable, perfect will of God. We don't have to wonder what God's will is for our life. He tells us in those two verses that we are to be more like Him. That is God's will. So if we come to a crossroad, is this, is this going to further my relationship with God, if it is okay, and if not, reject. So there's a contrast between the, the Christians and the unconverted, the ones not living for the Lord. The Christians are to manifest the light that comes by knowing Jesus. The sinners, or the ones who choose not to follow Christ, are manifesting spiritual darkness because 
Scripture says we're either gonna we're gonna to love one and hate the other. There, there's no. I remember thinking a long time. I think I really convinced myself of it that there's somewhere in the middle. But the thing about it is there there is no middle. Either you're for or you're against. So manifesting spiritual darkness. Christians are yielding, are supposed to be yielding the fruit of the Spirit. The ones who are not following Christ are characterized by works that cannot be called fruit. The Christians are supposed to be reproving or reprimanding the darkness. And the ones who are not following Christ, they're being reproved or reprimanded by the light. Verse 18, I'll spend just a very short time. Uh, it says, uh, Ephesians 5, 18, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. Dissipation, one definition, is reckless living. But, it says, be filled with the Spirit. So verse 18 has a prohibition and a positive command. A few examples of a prohibition are found in verses 3 and 4 of chapter 5. Verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. That's a short list of prohibitions. And verse 3 says, when it says fornication, two people who are not married to each other, and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be named among you as is fitting for saints. Um, this, 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 wait a minute, this, dissipation, the word dissipation that's used in the text, a definition is squandering of money, energy, or resources. So verse 18, do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Drunkenness is consistently condemned in the Old Testament and the New Testament as it represents a lack of self-control. We are to be, and this is the positive, we are to be under the controlling influence of God's Holy Spirit that lives inside us. The command in that verse about the Holy Spirit, the command is expressed in ongoing action, present imperative in the Greek. And it reads, be being filled with the Spirit. Be being filled with the Spirit. Always be experiencing the fullness of the Spirit. So that being filled with God's Spirit means that we are so under His controlling influence that he is at work in everything we do, say, or feel. Be filled as a metaphor means to be completely possessed, permeated, and dominated by the power of the Spirit. That really doesn't leave any, any wiggle room. It is very clear and very plain, I believe. For the good stuff, verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. 
I remember when we go to the, that Nazarene church behind McDonald's, same Nazarene church building that's been there uh, for many, many years. But my family would go and we would line up and we had a song that we sung, We're the Utley Family, How You Do You Do. And I was a baby, I'd always stand by mom and receive the first pinch if somebody down the line was acting up. And I know that my brothers are listening. But anyway, it was, it was fun standing there singing, we're the Utley family, how you do, you do, and we're so very glad to be here, and so on and so forth. This says, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, uh, it was fun. It was fun. The word psalms, a song sung to the accompaniment of a harp, a hymn, and these are not the only definitions, but a hymn, songs of worship addressed to God. So we're really singing unto the Lord. Spiritual songs, any other songs of elevated style and edifying content. Spiritual is a key word. The church's music must be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Fellowship controlled by the Spirit of God for the mutual benefit of all present. Verse 20 says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's three sections to that, I believe, at the very beginning. Always, and this is referring to speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. 20 says, giving thanks always for all things, but just make sure that it's directed to God. Always for all things directed to God. And then there was one interesting thing about verse 21 one particular understanding about, about verse 21 where it says submitting to one another in the fear of God. When I first read this, I thought, I, I don't particularly like that. But uh, anyway, each Christian is in submission to the other unselfishly Seeking the other's welfare, willing to serve, and subordinating his own independence. I don't know how they got all of that out of submitting to one another in the fear of God. But I can see that that is exactly what that means. Each Christian is in submission to the other, unselfishly seeking the other's welfare, willing to serve, and subordinating his own independence. And I think that can fit in the slot in verse 20. Always for all things directed to God. But the bottom line is, and I think the most important is, the be being filled with the Spirit, always be experiencing the fullness of the Spirit, so that as we're walking and we are paying attention to what's going on around us and who we are and who we belong to and how we're to live. 
what we are to say, how we are to react. If we are be being filled with the Spirit, experiencing the fullness of God in us, then no matter what comes our way, no matter the situation that we're in, if we remember whose we are, who we belong to, it will have an effect on our reactions. And I keep this in, my, in mind because it seems like wherever I go, there's usually some grandkids in the back. And I, uh, sometimes I forget, like when somebody pulls out in front of you or somebody cuts you off, or somebody blows by you running about 85 mile an hour and, and uh, I'm saying <laughs> and then I hear what'd you say Papa? <laughs> I just cleared my throat <clears> throat> Be being filled. If we are be being filled with the Spirit, I think the other stuff is going to take care of itself. It, it'll just take care of itself. Uh, it's hard to believe that they had all that information about those five little verses in, in Ephesians. Normally you do Ephesians 1 through, through 4 and then skip over to 6. But uh, we have to go by chapter 5 too. Stand with me if you will.